Hi everyone. Today we're going to make these super fun Model Magic minis. First, I'll show you how to color your Model Magic. Then I'll show you three different techniques that you can use to create your Model Magic mini masterpieces. To work with different colors of Model Magic, you will need the following materials. Either one package of white Model Magic and markers. You may also use either permanent markers or washable markers, or you will need colored Model Magic. To mix the colors of the rainbow, you only need red, blue, and yellow. You don't have to have white, but white is helpful to make colors lighter if you wish. You'll also want a scrap sheet of paper or paper plate to work on. This way the model magic doesn't stick to your table. The paper plate and scrap paper are also perfect to let your model magic dry out on after you're finished with your creations. Begin by cutting off the edge of the model magic wrapper. I like to cut it here because later I can put the model magic that is unused back in and seal the opening. That way my model magic won't dry out before I'm ready for it to. When you're ready to use the model magic, only take out what you need. That should be a little bit at a time. Leave the rest of it in the bag or the wrapper. That way the rest of it stays nice and soft and doesn't dry out. One of the ways that Model Magic is different than clay is that when you work with clay, the more you handle it and hold it and work with it, it's going to start to dry out. But with Model Magic, your hands will actually soften the Model Magic. So the more that you hold on to it and work with it, it's going to get softer and more malleable. So one of the first things you'll want to do is you'll kind of want to squeeze the Model Magic and kind of pull it apart a little bit to make it a little bit softer and easier to work with. Now let's talk about ways that we can add color. One of the ways is by using marker. Take the marker tip and add lots of color to your Model Magic. The more color you add, the richer and more colorful and darker the Model Magic will be. Once you feel like you've had enough, go ahead and start to mix and mold the Model Magic in your hands, pulling it apart and mixing it and smushing it back together. You'll see a transformation take place as your Model Magic goes from white into the color that you created. The more you mix it, the more even your color will be. If you don't mix it completely, it'll be a little bit more marbled. If you're not happy with the color that you made and you think it needs to be darker or even more colorful, go ahead and add more marker. The other way that you can create colors to use for Model Magic is to mix them using the primaries, which are red, yellow, and blue. When we combine two primary colors, we make what's called a secondary color. To make our first secondary color, rip off a small amount of red and a small amount of yellow. Since the red is actually darker than the yellow, you'll want to make sure that you have a little bit more yellow than red. Now we're going to mix them by smushing them together, pulling them apart, and putting them back together again. You'll repeat that step over and over again until you have orange. Now you've just created your first secondary color. Remember, secondary colors are created by mixing two primaries. In this case, we mixed red and yellow. When we mix a primary and secondary color, we will get what's called tertiary or intermediate colors. So for example, I'm going to divide my orange into three separate pieces. Now I'm going to make my first tertiary or intermediate color by taking a little bit of red and mixing it back into my orange. Remember, orange is made of red and yellow. And if we use a little bit more red, it's called red orange. 
If we use a little bit more yellow, it's called yellow orange. You always say the primary color first. So now I have my primary red, my secondary orange, and my intermediate, or remember we can also call them tertiary colors, which are red orange and yellow orange. Now let's move on to combining our next two primaries, which are yellow and blue. You'll want to use a little more yellow than blue, since blue is a darker color. After you've made the secondary color green by combining yellow and blue, it's time to make our tertiary or intermediate colors, which means that you're going to make a yellow green where you add more yellow to your green and a blue green where you add a little bit more blue back to your green. Now it's time to combine our red and blue primary colors. Remember, this will give us a secondary color. This will make purple. Since blue is our darkest color in this combination, we're gonna use a little bit more red than blue. Once we have our purple, we're going to break it up into three pieces. That way we can add in our two tertiary or intermediate colors. One will be combined with purple and blue to make a blue violet, which some might call indigo. And the other one will be combined with red to make a red violet. This color will look a lot like what you might call a raspberry color. Now if we were to connect the ends, we would have the full color wheel. Most color wheels start with red, then red orange, orange, yellow orange, yellow, yellow green, green, blue green, blue, blue violet, violet, and red violet. Now you've learned how to make the color wheel, but let's talk about a couple colors that aren't on the color wheel, one of which is brown. Brown is created by mixing your three primary colors. If you want more of a dark chocolate color, use a little bit more blue. If you want a warmer color, use a little bit more yellow. And if you don't get it right the first time, that's okay. You can keep adding your primaries until you feel like you've got it right. To make gray, you can use black and white. But what if you don't have black and white? That's okay. Use red and blue to make a purple. Then add a tiny bit of yellow. And that will give you a gray Since I have white, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to make my gray a little bit lighter. If it's still a little bit too purpley, you can add a little bit more yellow. You may just need to experiment adding some of your primary colors until you get your gray to look right. Now let's talk about some sculpting techniques. The first one is to roll it between your palm. This will give you a sphere. You can leave as is for anything that you want to be 3D or you can gently flatten it against the table and you'll get a flat circle. This is great for things like pancakes or hamburger buns. It also just makes it nice and even and you can turn that circle into other shapes. To make other shapes, you would roll it in your palm, then flatten it by gently using the palm of your hand and pressing the Model Magic into the table. Afterwards, you'd use your fingers to pinch the flat piece of Model Magic into whatever shape you'd like. I use this technique to create the paint palette, the napkin, and the piece of toast. For the next technique, I'll show you how to roll a coil. To make a coil, you'll start with rolling your Model Magic into a ball. Then you'll lay it on the table and using the bottom part of your palm, you'll press down and roll it forward and back until it elongates and gets more slender. The more pressure you provide, the skinnier it will get. Here are some Model Magic Minis that I created using the coiling technique. 
You'll notice that some of them are simple, like the banana or the paintbrush, while others might be a little bit more complicated, like the candy cane and the donut. I will show you how I do some of these techniques. For the pretzel, I simply take my coil and I crisscross it. Wherever the model magic touches, it's going to go ahead and stick. No glue is needed. So after I make my pretzel, I can add very tiny little pieces of white to resemble the salt. As long as I press them on there, they will stay. Again, you don't need any glue. For this reason, you'll want to be very careful when you add on pieces of model magic. The model magic sticks very quickly and may not easily be removed. Anything that you do not want to stick together should be dried separately on a piece of paper or paper plate for the next 12 hours. And you don't just have to stop with that plain coil. There are so many other cool techniques that you can create using a coil. You can twist them, wrap them, and swirl them. These techniques are perfect for sweet treats like whipped cream, lollipops, and candy kings. But I bet you could come up with some other creative ideas. The last technique that I'm going to show you is to pinch. So that's basically what you do. You take your fingertips and you pinch it into the desired shape. Now you may have noticed that I'm also smoothing out the edges. I tapped the top on the table to get it nice and flat and I rolled it on its side, pressing down on the part that I wanted to be skinnier to get a nice cone shape. And since we already have a cone, let me show you how to use a coil to make the swirly ice cream. Now, if you're anything like me, you might enjoy two flavors like vanilla and strawberry. For more interesting coiling effects, you may also enjoy twisting and or spiraling. Coils are also fun because you can add details by drawing with them. With coils, you can create all different types of lines. Straight, zigzag, loop-de-loop. -loop. In this case, I'm creating a wavy line. Here, I'm using a coil to add the icing onto my donut. Sprinkles add the perfect finishing touch. Each of these creations was made by either first rolling a coil or a sphere and then pinching it into its shape. So the strawberries were a sphere that were pinched at the tip and so was the banana and the cone. The cactus also got pinched at the top of each of its limbs. However, the pot and the cup were made using almost a pinch pot technique if you've ever done clay. So first I put a little hole in it by poking my finger in and then I carefully pinched around until I got the opening as wide as I wanted it. Now for the hot cocoa. Add a coil for the handle and ta-da! You have a cup of hot chocolate. Now I'm going to wrap up this video by showing you how to make a hamburger from start to finish. Don't forget, anything that you don't want to stick together should dry separately. These are just some of my creations. 
I hope you have fun and I can't wait to see what you create.